What element found in some older lenses is also used in nuclear reactors as fuel pellets? Thorium. And yes, it's radioactive, making these lenses radioactive. I know it's a concept that seems to defy all logic, but there is a reason for it, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. The element thorium is actually fairly common and can be found all around us in small amounts in rocks and soils. 2,600 ppm thorium. It's also used in some capacity in a number of different building materials. First discovered in 1928 by Swedish chemist Jean Jacob Berzelius, whose name I probably absolutely butchered, I'm sorry. But he did name the element after Thor, the Norse god of thunder. Between the 1930s and the mid-70s, it was used in photographic optics because of its high refractive index. Adding thorium dioxide to a silica mixture helps create glass with high refraction and low wavelength dispersion, which is exactly what you want for glass used in optics, as it nearly eliminates chromatic aberrations in a single element, as opposed to needing a second element to correct those aberrations. Take the thoriated 7-element Super Multicode Takamar 50mm f1.4, which is a thoriated lens, versus the non-thoriated 8-element Super Takamar 50mm f1.4. By adding thorium dioxide to the lens design, the technicians were able to simplify the optical design of the lens, making it less expensive to produce, and at the same time, not really compromising the image quality. Much. If at all. I don't know, I compared these two lenses and it was very hard to spot the difference between the two. Radioactivity, otherwise known as radioactive decay, or nuclear decay, is the process by which an unstable atom's nucleus releases energy by radiation. And the length of time for an atom to decay is called the element's half-life. Now a longer half-life means a slower release of radiation over a longer period of time. Thorium, for example, has a half-life that's estimated to be over 14 billion years. That, by the way, is about three times the age of the Earth. This is a very slow rate of decay versus francium, which is a highly radioactive material whose half-life is only 22 minutes. Francium, can you guess where that element was discovered? So while thorium rates low on the radioactive scale, it's still nonetheless radioactive, which the very mention of the word instills a good amount of fear. There's lots of data on the safety of these lenses, and I really don't want to parrot those facts here, I completely and totally understand the fear factor involved with a radioactive lens, and no matter what I say or what you read, you may never truly feel comfortable using a radioactive lens. And that's cool. There's loads of non-radioactive lenses to enjoy out there. Now aside from the nuisance of radioactivity, thorium has kind of another annoying side effect. Color cast. Over time, these lenses will develop a yellow-brown patina, which will compromise the image in both the color and, in some cases, even light transmission. Now, the color cast exists because of the damaging effects of ionizing radiation reacting to the presence of zinc oxide, which gets added to the glass as a stabilizer during manufacturing to reduce micro-air bubbles. Now, zinc oxide naturally has a yellowish color, which is what ultimately causes the yellowing of the glass over time due to the radioactive damage from the decay of the thorium in the glass composition. Now, it's not particularly easy to spot with the naked eye. One might mistake the yellowish coatings of the lens to be the result of thorium, as seen in this non-thoriated 8-element 50mm Takamar. To really see the color cast, it's best to view the lens against a brightly lit sheet of white paper. Now you can see my thoriated 7 element 50 where the color cast is impacting the lens elements. My 35mm f2 effects are quite high as well, where this white really isn't white at all. Now the good news is, the yellowing can be reversed with prolonged exposure to UV light. The UV light actually detaches the bond of zinc oxide and returns it to its original state within the glass, which will remove the yellowing. We actually haven't tried this process as of yet, but the first time it crossed my mind was when I used my Takamar set to shoot a Netflix development project a few years back. 
Now the color cast between some of the lenses was a little extreme and while the colorist I worked with was able to correct for it, it definitely added a bit of work to unify the color between all the focal lengths. For photo work, I kind of don't mind the results of the science experiment going on inside these lenses. So, radioactive lenses, what are your thoughts? Something you'd consider using or, uh, nah. I personally feel they are safe to use based on the loads of research I've done. But again, I totally understand if it's not your thing. And ultimately, that's why I don't want to sit here and try to convince you one way or the other. My purpose for this video is to really help share the information. What you do with it is up to you. Now, I do thank you for watching, especially if you've made it this far. Got a little bit more scientific there for a bit, but uh, I'm not sure you can really talk about radioactivity without kind of walking that fine line. Seriously though, with words like demon core and elephant foot, the Manhattan Project, Fallout, Nuclear Winter, Oppenheimer, looking forward to that film. Chernobyl? Great series, by the way. Oh, just unbelievable. 1986 was the year I think I lost my innocence. Being very, very young, and the uh, tr hearing about Chernobyl and nuclear fallout and radiation and the Challenger blowing up, that was a big year. That was a big year where I realized that bad things could happen. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. <sighs> Radioactivity.